Kathy Seascholtz, who is the uh, surly barkeep at the Bowery Poetry Club and Slam Master for the Urbana Poetry Slam. We're going to kick it off with one poem each. So I'm going to start with a poem which is available in this book, Elephant Engine High Dive Revival, the anthology. All proceeds Yay! of this book go towards funding this tour. So please, if you like what you hear, pick it up. Every poet on the tour, this leg, every leg is in this. And this poem is about last year's tour. It's called Junkyard Ghost Revival. It was October. Oh. <laughs> God has smoked me. Is it me? Try bringing down the bass, Alan. Try bringing down the bass, Alan. <laughs> he appreciates your suggestions. I would put some uh, WD-40 on the ball bearing. I say ball bearing. Maybe my poem is so hot, it's exploding the mic. Say someone with B in it, like ball bearings. Ball bearings. Ball bearings. <laughs> I'm gonna say balls. Balls. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's not how poetry is made, except on this tour. Um, all right. I think we're ready to go. So, junkyard ghost revival. <clears throat> it was October, and New England was stupid with beauty. A niece obsessively took out-of-focus photos of it streaming by our van window, all bl blurry red, gold, orange. The four of us, me, Anise, Buddy, and Derek, were old enough not to lose our shit when Anise left the cash box in a hotel room! God damn it! In Amherst! <laughs> but still young enough to be shameless suckers for roadside stands and ambitiously pretty waitresses. I always thought on tours like this I'd lose my voice on the third day, but I was wrong. I was right, however, about bringing presidential flashcards, lots of warm socks, and extra toothpaste, because Buddy Wakefield is a thief! <laughs> I was the only one in the van not nursing a broken heart. And consequently, I made the worst DJ. <laughs> <laughs> the world's largest and smallest hamburgers can be found in the same diner in Pennsylvania, in a town which also claims to have a haunted core base. And the state's best shoe fly pie. They call it shoe fly, because it's a pie made of molasses. And you got to shoe flies away from something that sweet. And we could have had the best shoe fly pie in the state. But no, we had to keep driving. The one day we had off was spent in Maine. First, at an antique store that sold dusty banjos and tiny pewter birds we later found out were salt shakers, and later at a lobster shack so close to the ocean the wind dried the butter to our chins before the napkins had a chance every other night. We stomped on the hardwood, pulled books out of eager boxes, and then stuffed them right back in, unsold but unswayed. We would flop down on a series of different empty beds, but sometimes, sometimes in between, we would marvel the sky from the parking lot, the moon doing its usual magic, the stars poking through the clouds, the air fresh and slick and hopeful tomorrow, not slowing down for a second. Yeah. 